holy moly, guacamole, today we take over the world. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Simon Tech. Once again, today I have yet another talking head video because everybody keeps asking, you know, what I'm going to do when I can't mine ETH anymore. We're going to talk about what I kind of have in mind for mining cryptocurrency in particular with GPUs in particular because I'm not really an ASICs guy. Not a fan of, you know, one manufacturer making all the hardware of course that is changing and we'll be talking about that in another talking head video if you guys are interested of course let me know in the comment section below but before we get into that thank you guys for 50,000 subscribers it is absolutely insane after the last mining boom the cryptocurrency youtuber known as son of a tech went into kind of just a a lull a bear market of subs and then it came back and along with the rise of Bitcoin, we are now building the community once again. And I really appreciate that a bunch. If you guys wanna know kind of my whole process on, of course, making YouTube content, what went through my head during all that time and more of a talking head video on how I handled it, which probably wasn't actually great, but you know, maybe you can learn something from it if you're an aspiring content creator. Let me know in the comment section below. It's something that I kind of was thinking about addressing. Now to the 50,000 subs, I don't know what we're gonna do for it yet. I already had my talking head video planned for today, so that's gonna come out on schedule. I have to work on a migration tonight for my day job, so I will not be able to do any sort of live stream, unfortunately. However, if you guys think we should do a live stream to celebrate, let me know. If you have any fun, quirky ideas that are, of course, you know, PC and cool and and not crazy. Somebody said fill up a bathtub with gasoline and shoot it with a shotgun. I don't, that's not, I don't want to do that. Um, so maybe also be nicer. That would be cool. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's get into it. So obviously we have proof of stake coming for Ethereum no matter what. We have the threat of, of course, mining becoming less profitable with EIP 1559. We also have the threat of ETH1 going proof of stake before ETH 2.0 is launched. So the mining community is, you know, justifiably freaking out. Will it still be profitable? What can I do? And so on and so forth. Now, opposed to ASICs miners, even ASIC ETH miners, you are probably a little bit better off than say them. So by that, I mean, if you're a GPU miner, if you follow this channel, we've talked about GPUs. GPUs are kind of the workhorse. They're able to do anything. They can mine anything pretty much, right? Unless it's ASICs have fully taken it over. But, but what I mean is they're, they're versatile. And because they're versatile, we have quite a few options. One, you could sell them off, but a lot of people are going to be selling them off. because So you're going to lose some uh, money on that as opposed to trying to find the top of ETH and sell there, which is also just impossible to do. A lot of people want a solid answer. And as with anything else in cryptocurrency and mining, there is not a solid answer. When people are like, well, what can, what's my payoff time? We don't know that even. We can say, you know, based on today and the difficulty of the network and how much ETH is worth, you could maybe pay this card off in 90 days and so on and so forth. But there's no promises to that. And there's no promises to where any of these other currencies are going to be headed either. And I think that it's very important that everybody keeps that in mind because this whole like, I make $10 a day and I can be guaranteed that I'll make $10 a day. My Mining for however many days is just not true. That's not going to happen. But here's a few things I'm personally looking at when I am trying to decide on, of course, what might be the possibilities to move my graphics cards over when ETH is either less profitable or, of course, it 
becomes not mineable at all. There's a couple different websites you can use. There's Minerstat, there's what to mine which is kind of the classic and so on. You can just basically type in whatever GPU you have and then go through the process of determining what is most profitable at the time. The idea for mining cryptocurrency is going to be more along the lines of mining whatever is most profitable and then you can always just sell that or swap that for what is not as profitable. There are other strategies which is mining uh, something that is less profitable but has a higher upside like hedge mining and I did that a long time with Ravencoin for example during the bear market and so on but you know at the end of the day if you were still mining the most profitable and then swapping it for something that's less profitable you're probably going to be better off so if we look at the most profitable coins we are going to see that ETH is by far ahead of everything else but other things are still profitable even right now albeit, you know, maybe about half of the cut. So this is what I talked about in basically the GPU mining strategies was that we have an issue where once we can't mine Ethereum, uh, the profitability is gonna drop significantly. So keeping that in mind, you need to consider the fact that your payoff time is going to change quite a bit too. But so could the different projects that are currently mineable as well. There are a lot of different good projects that are pretty promising and the few that I've been been looking at or mining even on the side even through ETH has been Conflux and Ravencoin which we have guides for on this channel. Now as you guys can see though we picked you know Ravencoin as well as Conflux. Now they are still probably the second and third most profitable coins. The, there is an honorable mention of Grin, but there's a lot of other issues that come into play with Grin as far as mining and the different types of wallets and the trading process for it. I'm actually still working on figuring it all out right now. It's a lot easier to mine something like Ravencoin or Conflux and swap that out for you know ethereum or bitcoin or monero or something along those lines a larger coin it's a little bit more difficult with grin and the mining's a little bit more difficult so i'm still kind of playing with that idea we also have talked about vertcoin but vertcoin is a very specifically aimed coin at production machines or machines that are in production for other uses and because of that, it doesn't really play as well with farms, at least in my opinion, but that's another one to keep an eye out for. So two honorable mentions here before we even get into the two that I'm going to be looking at when moving off ETH is going to be Grin, of course, and Vertcoin. But let's talk about Conflux for a second. A lot of people are nervous about Conflux, you know, being basically a Chinese coin. We can confirm here that the university is based in, of course, China, Beijing. And if you take a look that the network originated from that research lab, Turing Award assistant, Dr. Andrew Yao. And this is kind of something that some people have some issues with. However, it is important to also note that cryptocurrency and China have been hand in hand since Bitcoin for the longest time, especially if we're talking about mining. So here you have basically the entire team, so on. I usually don't care about this stuff as much. The economic white paper is what makes me interested. And without going into too much depth, I'll leave the link for the white paper down below. But the reason I really like Conflux or the idea of Conflux and what they're pushing for it, of course, with the white paper is essentially going to be a proof of work coin with multiple chains. So one of the big issues with ETH is that because it's proof of work and because it's a single chain, the network is slow and the fees are high and they are going to fix that or propose to fix that with proof of stake and moving of course to sharding s-h-a-r-d-i-n-g i can already see your wheels turning you dirty dirty person 
shards. Dzz. Duh. All right. So the shards are going to basically represent multiple chains. Now what Conflux is doing is going to remain proof of work. However, it is going to have multiple chains. So think of it as a proof of work version of something like Ethereum 2.0 or Polkadot. Now there is something to mention with Polkadot too when we're talking about multi-chain tokens and coins and the basically the application coins like we've talked about before and that is that Polkadot is mineable but not directly for DOT. Polkadot itself though allows people to build chains that are mineable chains within the ecosystem. So mineable tokens is something that is going to be a, a possibility and probably going to be highly profitable as well. So when we're shifting and moving in these markets as miners, it's important to keep your options open as much as possible. With, of course, GPUs, this is easier than ASICs, which is one of the things that we've mentioned before. But it is possible that there will be a token that is profitable on Polkadot as well. But because we have this economic system from Conflux and because it will be essentially a multi-chain ETH 2.0, it is something that I find to be probably one of the more profitable mining coins or mineable coins here in the near future once ETH has moved to proof of stake. Hence why this is the one I have my eye on to move my farms to. Now I have always mined Ravencoin. And Ravencoin, from a white paper perspective, has always been strong. Essentially, the idea is that it is an ASIC resistant asset coin, once again. So we're talking about an application coin like Ethereum, like Conflux, and so forth. However, the development has been quite lacking over the years and has not kept up. The current roadmap hasn't been updated since July 9th of 2020, and that is, you know, creeping up on over six months, and it makes me nervous, as well as I feel like creating all the applications, and we don't even really have a wiki. It's been... You have a Bitcoin talk, a Twitter. I just want to confirm all of this hasn't changed. I guess you do have the wiki. So let's take, I mean, this is a Wikipedia. This isn't, this isn't a wiki. So let me show you what a wiki is, right? So if we went to uh, Polkadot, when I refer to a wiki for an application coin, what I am looking for is a development guide, starters guides. I'm looking for parachain development kits. I'm looking for a development guide for smart contracts. This is what I'm looking for in a wiki, in an application coin. And my disappointments with Ravencoin have been that we don't seem to have a very good push for development at this current time. Does that mean that I think they won't get there? No, it's just something that I've been a little frustrated with the, the coin on in general. That being said, why would you want to mine it? Well, we talk about hedge mining, but this wouldn't be, it is still profitable, but it's possible that Ravencoin becomes significantly more profitable. The reason being is that like Bitcoin, it halves on a clock. So you can pretty much guarantee every single time it is going to have. If you take a look here, what you'll see is you have 1458.3 every one minute, right? So they are able to calculate this out and it will have in January, 2022. When it halves, the block reward will change from 5,000 Raven to 2,500 Raven, thereby decreasing the amount of mineable Raven coins in half. And if we're talking about what that means for the profitability of Ravencoin, the most profitable time to mine Ravencoin is going to be before it halves. So let's say Ethereum, for example, goes proof of stake or becomes unprofitable within the next few months before the halving of Ravencoin. 
you could hedge mine that Raven coin, be getting the 5,000 block reward bonuses. And then in January, when it cuts in half, just ride the train of the halving. Every single time Bitcoin is halved, the price of Bitcoin has gone up. And there's no reason to think that this wouldn't be similar in other projects such as Ravencoin. Does this mean it's going to be a dollar coin or something like that? No, it just means that by nature, because of the reduction of supply and new coins coming into the network, that the demand of the coin will go up and the price will go up. How much? I don't know. I just know that mining while you get the max reward before the halving is going to be something that is... Uh, something I'm paying attention to, right? And so when I talk about these two different coins and why I would move to mining them, these are pretty much the reasons why. Conflux being a technological point of view, I guess both being a tech point of view, but for Conflux in particular, I've been impressed, of course, with the design and the white paper. Ravencoin, I have been impressed with it in the past. However, like I said, there's some disappointments uh, with it right now. I don't feel like they're providing the community with enough tools to actually utilize it to its fullest effect. And if they could give the community more tools to do that with, I think that the price would go up at least and it would be more enticing. So those are the two coins I'm planning on moving to mining to if... It was like Ethereum is stops being profitable tomorrow. The thing is, is you guys need to pay attention to the fact that this is a changing market. So what's profitable today, what looks promising today, won't be promising a year from now or two years from now or even a month from now though, right? So because of that, you need to be able to be paying attention, researching and so forth. What I'm going to offer is if you hit that subscribe button, get us closer to that 100,000, <laughs> I will be giving you guys my thoughts and strategies uh, coming from the perspective of a miner. I also want to move closer and closer to developing more. I want to get better with my developing skills in Rust and things like Solidity and prepare myself personally for the shift eventually away from mining completely because I don't think that's the end game for crypto. I'm not saying mining stops anytime soon. Don't get me wrong. I just think of it more of like a Ford motor car being towed by a horse at this time and because it ran out of gas, if that makes sense. That's the best analogy I can think of. And that movement in technology is going to be slow. So don't be scared that mining's ending tomorrow or even a year from now or even 10 years from now, because I don't think it will. But it is good for you to prepare yourself for other opportunities in the crypto space outside of just mining. And that's my personal opinion and what I'm personally doing. So I hope this video is helpful. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I saw 86% of you aren't subscribed already. So if you could hit that, we could, we could literally pump those numbers way up, which would be awesome. Also only 6% of you have the notification bell on. Hit that if you wanna be notified when Basically, I release a video, which is currently every day. And then don't forget to let me know what you guys think about doing a 50,000 sub. And I will see you next Tuesday.